Evening, everyone. You know, tonight, uh, I've never looked on the phone to look and see this house of the world finds it. And on Monday, for the first time I ever looked at, I want to tell you a story. I was up, I was, I was coming down here one morning, and I felt this. The road telling me to go to Belfast. Hey, that's 50 men away. And I says, Lord, I'm quite busy, you know. Now I want you to go to Belfast. And I found that inside myself to go to the oil. And the only person I could think of the oil was a man up here, Roman Deans, I know, Christian. So I went up to, as so I went up, I just left my heart and throat left Norman in my mind, so I went to see Norman. And Norman had a brain tumor, and uh, it was worth 40 or 41. And I walked, walked up into Ward 41 and told him to Norman. And see, I remember I told you, I looked at them tapes, you know, the CDs for the first time ever. I never even realised it. I took a lot of my hands. And I moved a lot of my hands. I so, said, oh yeah, this, I was up and, and all of a sudden, all of his wife come in, and all of his wife said, pretty, you know, she can hold her arm down. She broke down and started crying. And he said, I've heard, told you a story. And she told me the granddaughter's not going to make it. So all of a sudden, I felt this compassion. And it just flooded through me. And I'd never experienced it the same. And all of a sudden, I had a sense in myself to go and pray for the granddaughter. So I went over to the children's ward to try and cut it short. Went up in and of course I asked the name. Is there any Ruth Dean say that was the daughter? But I forgot she was married. And that was a different name I was asking for. And she says, no, there's no Ruth Dean's here. There's no Ruth. Well, there's only one Ruth. And so where's she at? Well, the next thing gear. The nurse took me right up to the place, and I looked down, and she says, that's her there. Now listen, I goes up and walks in, Ruth sees me, right? and the nurse says, uh, temperature 39.9, increasing. So I walked in. So uh, I says, uh, from everybody, it's all right if I pray. And John, the husband, said, well, it's certainly not doing any harm. And I walked over. I was led with this inside myself, this, to explain it, just a compassion. I don't know, it's compassion. I was moved with compassion to pray. You ever said that? You ever read of it? Jesus was moved with compassion? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying here? So, all of a sudden, I walked over and I just said, Father, I don't throw the book this temperature and I command 100%. And her heart, there's a problem with her heart, I command her heart to 100%. That was all right. After I prayed, the nurse walked in and put the temperature in the child again. She walked back. 36.9. No. And I stayed up on her tube head at home. Okay. My actually that's this here. I was I was going on uh, I was married forty eight years in the twenty September and I was going on Monday the eighteenth to go up for three days to Derry London to end up south. And the Lord says to me, Wally, you are now dwelling in Goshen. I was just ready to get off in the train. And I, I said, right, I get the phone. And I pressed on Goshen. And it said on the thing, spiritual Goshen. Well, that was the place, and I said, I spoke in that, but where Joseph took yeah. his father and his brothers and all the family servants. And they moved to Goshen. The Egyptians would not come. So they were separated. 
And in that place, God supernaturally provided for them. Okay then. Listen to what I'm going to say here. That's the secret place. Hey, listen, when I was in holiday there, all of a sudden, a couple of days in, I felt this compassion again for me. And my granddaughter came out from me. And there were things just coming and typing type and different things. But I'd been praying against this. And all of a sudden, and I said this, one Friday night, I think it's the 29th of the 9th, 2023. Now there's no heading on the Friday night. But from tonight there'll be headings. Now listen, when you hear this, there's something come in me. And I just was inside myself, myself away from heaven. If I get authority over this stronghold, whatever's going on here, and I pull this down, Father, and all of a sudden I moved on to my wife. And I pulled the strongholds and everything that's going on. All of a sudden, I just paid all over my family and everything. My grandchildren, everything, my grandchildren. Then I felt led to pray for our money. Pulling down the strongholds. I've done this. For a long time. Okay. I pulled all the strong waters coming against the ministry. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all I'm just saying to you is. I was moved. After I went all day to do that. I come home. And my granddaughter. 90% changed her. And I told you on the 29th of the 9th about pulling down, you need to pull down the strongholds. Strongholds, not stronghold. Strongholds. Listen to this here. I turned around. <clears throat> After that there, we, I don't know many, I never looked at the phone, many things have been hit with the house of the Lord Jesus. The next Sunday in the 8th maybe or something like this, whenever it was, I spoke. The ministry went up to 18, 89 views. Last Sunday, I think the last report I heard was 135 views. Everybody only views who's coming in there or the person's in. They don't realise there's a lot of more things here than all than people tell us. And that's and all I'm just saying to you is what brought that change? I'm trying to tell you what they were told me to do. And could I tell you this? Why was I not able to do that before? And I was pulling down and I went why did that not come down? Why did it not come down? Wally, you are now dwelling in Goshen. And in the secret place, as we first has come to, he is able to do exceeding the far more above the other ask her thing, according to the bar. According to the bar that's world. Right? And all I'm just saying here is, we read the secret place, blah, blah, blah. Now listen, I'm just telling you, I just know there's something out there. Spiritually. And all I'm just saying to you is at the end of the day, there are a pile of people saying, well, that's deliverance. Or I know what to think. But listen to what I'm trying to say. Most of us are still there at Sunday's message to overcome. Most of us are overcome. And we don't realise there's things there that need to be pulled out to break through different things. 
Okay, and I'm, I'm saying this very, very gently, but I'll tell you why. At the end of the day, um, last week I was reading, two or three days ago I was reading a uh, wee psalm, I see I carry on the book. And uh, I, I told you before when the Lord moved, I tell you different situations where the Lord did and the Lord healed and the Lord done things. You get what I'm saying here? In my life, in your lives. But listen, and I've been praying for them strongholds to pull down. But all I'm just saying here is the Lord says now you want to hear the belt of And I just know when you're there, you're, I'll, I'll, read, I'll read a couple of verses. Let's just pull you to Psalm 24. This is talking about those who dwell in his holy house. Psalm 24. What's wrong then, sorry? Oh, you're going to be Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Who, verse 3, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Okay. Right. Uh, or, or who shall stand at his holy place, the secret place? He that has clean hands, pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul on the vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Could I put this here? The Lord has put his character on. Person. And the Lord has done a work of sanctification. Does that make sense? Right? And the Lord has brought this believer to this place. And he wants to bring you. He wants to bring everyone. You get what I'm saying? He wants this you back. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Did you ever see that back? And righteousness from the God of his salvation. The night you were saved, you received positional righteousness. In other words, you're set apart and sanctified in Christ. Yeah, that. And you are now righteous because uh, the word is justified. What well, this is talking about personal righteousness. That all makes sense there. Right. Can I read this verse again? Who shall ascend the who shall ascend who shall ascend the Lord? Who can who can go here? Mm-hmm. Only those with a clean hand pure pure heart. Right? And then it tells you, if you're not left the soul or sworn, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Okay. Right? That's one of the Psalms talks about. Yeah, yeah, that. Now, what's this? If you go to uh, Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who shall dwell in thy hotel? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness. And this is not something he does. This is something that God has done in him. So you get to the stage and you think, that's a word. I need to do this. No, no, you need to, I was saying Sunday, you need to yield. And you need to yoke with soul rest to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you would let the Holy Spirit of God do this work in you. Well, why do we not see this? Or why does, why does no one see this? Okay, I'll tell you, maybe try and... And you can read all this. It's talking here about a character. And you think of David. David, this, this is David's testimony of the character God. You get that? It's his testimony. Now, if you read Revelations 12, you see if you get it up there. Revelations, maybe chapter 12. Verse 11. 
And they overcame him. Who? The serpent. By the blood of the Lamb. And what else? The word of their testimony. How did they come overcome him? The two things. The blood of the Lamb. And the word of their testimony. Okay, is that, is that what it says there? And they loved not their lives unto death. Here's what we believe. You overcome with birth. Listen, I'm only reading the verses. Bear my hands away. I don't think I've done this before. I'm not reading the new catch on. I'm, I, I've been telling you. What is that? What's the one? Just, I'm just standing on the hands. You did not notice that, no? I didn't know what it was going to say. What is this now? We see this now. See that verse there. If you go to First John two verse fourteen, that verse is just come into my mind here. See, and this will come to me. That not see when I looked at that video on Sunday, on there was a compassion command me. And it was a compassion of the responsibility to stand before the people. It's an awesome responsibility to stand up for the people. You may not think it. It's an awesome responsibility. Because I do not want to do this. Please, I'm just telling you. Well, it says for telling you, by, I'll show you the verse that said. First John 2, verse 14, what's your First John 2 verse 14 I have written unto you fathers because you have known him as from the beginning I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one how did, you, how did the young men overcome? because the word of God now abideth, abideth in their heart and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Okay. Listen. See see these things. You can hardly tell them in the day around. For the way the church is built up is built up and serving. And most people have been taught to serve. So I'll ask you the question. What are you serving God for? Well, I'm sure I, I can't answer you. That. You hear the answer, so okay. Yeah. God doesn't need you to serve. I was telling you, son, God wants your heart, and God wants you to obey Him. And see when He gets your heart, and you obey Him. God can produce his character in you. Right, we, we assure you this. Um, I've said this before, but tonight, Father, we just pull every stronghold down the lines. And all the teaching, Father, that we've heard, and Father, we pull down the stronghold of pride. And we pray tonight, Lord, that the eyes of our understanding would be opened, that we would hear your word in clear, and we pray, Lord, you take away the hardened hearts if they're hardened. Excuse me, that we may hear your word. Now, if you go to Exodus 23, I'm sorry for all of this, but this is the key structure for you to overcome. Now, I said, I said a wee thing, but I said a go there. What's this? If you go to Hebrews 12, verse 23, your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins. You are bo every one of us born or not. We need to be born again. How do you get born again? Well, first of all, you need to be at the temptation that we have a sinful nature and we're not it. But Christ died for our sins. I'm sorry for the for this, but there's a lot of people they caught. Maybe just didn't know the simplicity. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
right? And if you go to he Hebrews 12, verse 22, and I see this in Hebrews, but listen, maybe a lot of people don't see this. Hebrews 12, verse 22. And it says at the very last of the verse, unto the spirits of just men and women made perfect. Your spirit has been made perfect. Your spirit has been justified. In other words, God declares you righteous with a position of righteousness because now you're in Christ. And your spirit is made perfect. Most of the body of Christ will walk. That's by the gospel. But here's the key. And I said this, I'm sorry, but over again. Your heart or your soul and your body it's not sanctified. It's not made perfect. And God has a work to do in it in the sanctification of your soul. So that he can produce the character he wants to produce in you. So that you can abide in his holy will. Get that now. And be and dwell in his secret place. And when you're there, everything in your life begins to work. Protection, provision, prayer. Everything. If there's a relationship problem, the Lord will restore the relationship in his time. If it's family, God will restore these things. So that's what happened to Joseph in Goshen. <clears throat> Here's our problem. We've been programmed with other things. And most of us have not got to a place where we're following the Lord. But we're following the program that we've led other people to program us with. You hear what I'm saying? Now? And that's why we never see eh, that has become a stronghold because you filter everything through what you've heard. And you can't let that go. Unless somebody comes along and pulls that stronghold down to let you see the truth. And then you start walking, seeing this truth. Right. If you go to Exodus 23, Israel, that's for Israel. Exodus. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and bring thee into the place I prepared. So what was Israel to do? Mm -hmm. Right? I have sent an angel before you. Right? What verse is that? Verse 20. Behold, I send an angel. Big capital A. That's the angel of the Lord. That's the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Behold, I send an angel before thee. Now, what's his job? To keep thee in the way. Now, we hear this. Car was going shopping this morning, and I was out before in the car, and I'm living up there maybe 17, 18 years. And at the time I moved down to that house up there, they put new trees in. Okay, right? And beside the tree, they battered this post, like a fence post. And all of a sudden, I never noticed before, but the fence post had fell away the same. Because the tree had got rooted and now it's grown. But it needed that fence post or that stay in it to keep it there so that it would grow. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee. But he can only keep those who are yoked and yielded. And who are willing to follow his voice. No. I want to hear this stuff. But you, here's the problem. Your mind's programmed with other things. So you're not going to be able to follow it. Now what's this wee bit here? That post, and I thought so. That stay has kept that tree in a place where it could grow. And I don't we ever know this before now. That tree, whatever height the tree is, the roots are below the ground. 
You never know that. Yeah. There's a root system below the ground, the same as the tree. For that's the only thing told. You never know that, folks. Mm -hmm. And spiritually. Junior asks foundation. Oh, listen, if I could draw up there, watch. Here it is. Well, you know, you're not here, Ben Corson. I don't want to be. And they've disappeared. There's your ground set. There's your tree. Of course, that's dried up. Of course, it looks good, doesn't it? And she looks good. That's this, right? There it is. That's a big flat tree there. Right. This one's really dried up, too. And here we go, the tree. Okay, it's not very good. Well done, but this. That's this here. So that is this. That is this here. The root system here. You don't see this. You see this. And whatever's above the ground is below the ground. For to hold the tree. Now, we'll see when that tree started. It started, it started with this wee thing. And this post was beside it. But as this grew up, this, it was like stepping out of this. Listen to this verse here. Behold, I send you an angel, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, to keep thee in. But it's only for those who use it yoke. For he, listen to this here, and to bring thee into the place which I prepared for thee. Read it in there. Behold, I send an angel before thee, to keep thee. Behold, uh, to keep to keep thee in the way. So when you're yoked to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're yielded and so rest, whose job is it to keep thee in the way? The Lord Jesus Christ. That was the angel for Israel. That was the angel for Israel to lead them. But they wouldn't listen. That, that makes sense here. Well, we have other programs, but we're telling other people that what to do. And we're not telling the gospel. I, I, I hate to be careful what I'm saying. But listen, that's me, me first here. Don't move away, Mel. I said, before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared for you. And I, I remember reading that years ago, and I said, Lord, do you meant to say all I have to do is follow you? Mm -hmm. And you will keep me, and you will bring me into the place that you have prepared for me. One hundred percent, whether the majority is having a clue on sir. Because you're following other things. And you're following other programs, other people, you've allowed people to program you with. And all I'm just saying, I don't, I don't see that sense that's to be taken. But I'm just trying to say, that's all I have to do. That's all I have to do. Mm -hmm. The Lord will keep them. And the Lord will bring them. You must hear, that's like your remote control. You do this, and I'll bring that up to you all now what's this? Beware of him and a beige bush. There's all you have to do. Beware of him and a beige bush. It's not about to serve him. It's about to be. So it's sad to say we've allowed other people to program us with a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. And that program is in our minds. Most of us. And we are going to say, Friday night's meet this. Are you programmed for failure? Are you programmed for failure? Have you allowed other people to program you for failure? Oh, but do, you, do you hear him saying that? Mm -hmm. Lord, tonight we pray the, them strongholds, maybe for the first time, will be pulled down where the sea has simple the Christian like this. But God wants to bring and do everything, bring you, bring you to what place? But I tell you, he wants you to bring a secret place. A place where he's prepared for you. Right? And there's characteristics that he wants to put in you. Clean hands and a pure heart. And then know the end result will be. 
the blessing of the Lord. You read it in it. Psalm 24. I mean, listen, see that there, don't go down over that. We read this. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will do in Exodus 23 there. Go read Psalm 24 just to see it. Exodus 24, sorry, Psalm 24. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in holy hill? We've all been justified. Our spirits, our spirits is justified. We're in Christ. We're blessed with every spirit, spirit of blessing. You, listen, you know all things. And you have all things. First Corinthians 3, verse 21 to 23. 1 John 2, verse 20 and 27. You have and you know all things in your spirit. But you can't get it to operate. To God does this work of sanctification in your soul. And if God has not got your yielded, he can't bring you into this place mm He's -hmm. prepared. You get that? Mm -hmm. And the majority is, has allowed other people, including myself for years, by other programs in and most of us will struggle because their mindsets that we have has now become strongholds. Or else other people have come along and told you certain things which is maybe not 100%. And now that thing is in your mind and it's a struggle. And you're looking to the way they think it should be done, basically. But listen to this here. Psalm 24. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. But you are blessed. I know you're blessed with all spiritual blessings. But this is the blessing that comes from the Lord when he takes you to the sacred place. Hmm. Now you can understand this. We don't understand it. God wants you to be the overcomer. But most of us are overcome. Now listen, here's, I'm going to show you a verse, Hebrews 13, verse 17. Now listen, obey them that have rule over you, and submit yourselves, for the wife here, so on. You must hear, I went to Stephen Carvin's meeting one night, early about early, on the course. Yeah, Stephen asked me to speak, and I went up that night, early, but I always went early to me, and I opened the Bible. And that's what the Lord says to me, well, you will give account every time you raise up and speak of the soldier's speak. Now do you see the awesome response of it? No, you're so. And the coming day I'll give an account that you guard their soul. Well, then. Obey them that rule it and submit yourself for the watch for your soul. You may not realise it, but I'm watching for your soul. Please, I'm not trying to put it yeah. on you. I'm going to tell you this. There's many and eight I'm way down for the simple reason that's because of what the body of Christ has taught. And that's why when I went on that week Monday morning for the first time in my life, I went online, not that I can work phone that much. And this compassion in my heart and acceptance, and their heaviness, not a heaviness of sorrow, but of heaviness because of what the body of Christ are doing. You see the next few verses, it says, I say, must give a friend. And I'm mean, not meaning Stephen's. You meant to say, Lord, I will give an account of this. Yes, you will. You will give an account. Now, can I tell you this? Not that I'm trying to push it or say on to you. I'm trying to help you come to a place where you'll be open yielded and you'll move into it. And then he'll let you keep you safe in the secret. Mm -hmm. Now, read that verse, do you see it? And I'll tell you better than that. If anybody wants the front platform, will I tell you this? True. Child of God, 
has a responsibility for the souls of men. Now, the majority don't understand what I've said. And see, when I read that Sunday morning, that same compassion to man me, that when that to man to me, when I went into the Royal Hospital with that child, mm -hmm. just the same compassion that helped us. Now, it's not a compassion of weighed down with worry and stuff, but it's a comp it was the compassion, compassion of Christ. And I was moved with compassion to go and pray for that mm -hmm. And that didn't cost me a thought, I just went to the door. Because I pray for that speaker. And I never read the husband's phone thing. And can I tell you this? I was walking down the street and I felt compassion that we here getting her head kicked out. And can I tell you this? It really breaks my heart when I know what the body of Christ is here. Mm -hmm. And he was here. Majority is don't care. But what I pray, Lord, that I, tonight the strongholds that we have allowed for us to be programmed with would be pulled down. And Father, we pray for every child of God. No matter where they're preaching, maybe the wrong stuff. Father, we pray that you open each one of our eyes that would you we would see the program that you have for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. On the way, Father, like the angel. The angel of the Lord will keep you and bring you into the place prepared for you. Mm. Now listen, if you read different verses now, I'm not trying to go for things, but listen, you and I don't realise that we have never been programmed for failure. And when you received that teaching, we didn't understand it. And it's become a stronghold. And what do you think we do? We go and tell others. So we bring them in. The same stuff. And then we go and tell her. Then somebody maybe writes up the truth. So you have this program in your mind. Mm -hmm. And you allowed other people to put it in your mind. But what if it's not the truth? And by the way, check me, check that thing out here. And see that stronghold. If you listen to us here, that, that stronghold needs pulled down strong. And that's why, oh, we see this reverse. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 7. Now, Maybe taking this out a bit of context to say to you that I read this verse this morning. Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse seven. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? That's right. Stop I stop reading there. Stop me. Now, I'll ask you the question. Do you look on the things after the outward appearance? Be a thing. I know a man or more. And he's maybe starting to do these things. And everybody looks at the outward appearance that he's losing his memory. And every time he does something wrong, the other day, it's always shaved the other day, he didn't he walked out shaved. And what were they looking at? What were they looking at? Yours. Hasn't shaved. So what was what were they thinking? He's starting to Now listen, spiritually, what are you looking at? I look. Most of us are looking at big numbers. Big ways of doing things. We're not on outward appearance. Oh, this is not happening in my family. This is not happening. Can I tell you this in all honesty? You're supposed to now you're supposed to walk following the Lord, focusing him. And this is not easy done. But as only as the Lord strengthens you and bringing you to the place where he does all that stuff, that you and I can focus on peace. Now I'm going to say something. 
Go you to Deuteronomy 5 verse 9 again. Now listen. If you've been taught that there's generational curses in your life. And you let me believe that. Even though if I could show you scripture and say they're not there. You still believe it. Because that's a strong. You hear what I said? If you go to jitter on me. I'm a judge. Okay. Jitter on me. I'm trying to hide my hand. No, that's what. I didn't realize they're gone. Jitter on me five. Jitter on me five verse nine. Yeah. Thou shalt not bind any servant or serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, of the children of the third and fourth generation. What does that verse say to us? He visits the iniquities of the children upon the third and fourth generation. Okay. So does that mean God curses him? No. Does that mean God curses him? Mm, well, okay then, right, okay. <laughs> right, go to Numbers 23. See, you need, honestly, we don't want to, uh, Numbers 23, I'm trying to say, I, thought, I just want to read verses here. Numbers 23. Verse 8, sir. How shall I curse him, God, but not curse Does that say God curse curse? No. No. No, we say there's a curse. Right? I know. I know a lesson. Clearly in other words. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not, is not a man he should lie. God never lies. Okay? Mm -hmm. God never changes. What God has said, he will never change. Malachi 3 verse 6. Well, don't go there. See now. Please, not God is not a man. No, God, I am the Lord. I change not. But that yeah. must Malachi three six. No, I'll stay here. I'll stay here. Right, right. Uh, we see Numbers twenty three. Now listen to us here. Are we all sinners? Was Israel was was Israel son? Has God? What's God doing with our sons? They need to be what? They need to be covered by the blood. Jesus Christ. Right. What about Israel's sons? They don't say very much. Do you need next verse? God is not a man that should lie, and the son of man that should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not he make it good? Nice. I know you, man. Now stop there. I might get back to this. Be hear this. My family, all these things were doing things. Then I read one night, Psalm. Oh dear, I can't remember this. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Now that's what your praise should be. Your praise should be praising the Lord. I'm praising the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Blessed is the man that fears the God, that delight greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. If I fear the Lord, what is my seed going to be? Right. What's yours going to be? Ah, oh, but they're doing this, and they're doing that, and they're doing the other thing, and this is happening, and the other thing's happening. What's coming out of your mouth? Is it the same with that verse you're saying? Mm -hmm. Tell me this. What shall my, if I fear the Lord, what shall my seed be? What should your, if you fear the Lord, what should your seed be? 
Do you believe that? Yeah. Ah, but what are they doing? We're programmed wrong. God is not a man, he's a light. So who's telling us why? Your mind. Because somebody else has programmed you. So it's in One hundred percent. But could you tell us? Next verse. Wealth and riches shall be in your house, and his righteousness endures forever. Remember I told you the one in Psalm 24, he who's clean hands and pure heart, what will he get from the Lord? What will he get? The blessing of the Lord. We don't believe that. Most of us don't believe that. We're programmed up. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't tell us because it's a, it's a, it's a stronghold in most our minds. And that strong one needs to be pulled down. What does the word say? Did God say he'd curse? No, he didn't. He says, them the best people. How about this? There's a necklace of fires on. Listen, I can work. I'll show you in a second. Am I cursed? No. Is my family cursed? No. My family's blessed. Should they be doing all this other stuff? Listen. They're blessed. We are programmed. We have allowed other people to program us for failure. And we're programmed. And you couldn't tell most of us. Because it's a stronghold. Now let's, let's reverse it. Let me show you a wee bit further. Now, oh, where's the next one? Oh, that's one. Right, that's somewhat more. Right. Oh dear. I can't I stand here but I can't, I can't where's that? There's another psalm about fear in the Lord. You see. It's not Psalm 118. Let me see if no, I can't see it. But listen that's here. Because I'm I want it one to you. I'm doing it talking about nine one to you. Eh, uh -huh. only you did <laughs> this. Yeah. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we're sin consciousness and we're all this mindset. We don't see who we are because we're programmed for failure because of the mindset we've allowed other people to program us with, including ourselves. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord. Excuse me, how many blessed? I said to you, if, if you fear the Lord, what, what are you? Yes. Right. For thou shalt eat the labour of thine hands, shalt be your mouth, and be wealthy. Thy wife shall be. What will your wife be? What will your wife be? What if she doesn't, doesn't not do one single thing you tell her? What will she be? What will she be? Even though she's doing this, what are we looking at? We're looking at her actions. Is it possible that's what's stopping her from being this? We don't see her what God says. Here's a man that fears the Lord. Here's what his seed's going to be. And here's what his wife's going to be. Mm -hmm. Ah, but she's doing this and doing that. Listen. You get this. You follow the Lord. You get the secret place. And let the Lord pull down all the strongholds then and pray and pull the down, strongholds down and just watch your seat and just watch your life. We're programmed for failure instead of being programmed for success. We are trying to read this. Thy wife shall be this. Thy wife, thy children, like all of plants round about. Behold, that thus shall be the man that blessed the fear of the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee in the Zion, and I shall see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. What are you going to see? All the goodness. What did the psalmist say? Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me. Uh, hello? What's going to follow you? Surely good, some mercy. Shall follow them away with hands. No, I left it. I left it handed. Surely goodness and mercy. You know what? I love to divert if I'm the Lord says, You're right, Lord. That's who I am. And that's what my life's going to be. And for years I've seen that I've programmed myself. No, she's doing this, she's doing this, and she's doing this, and she's doing this. And could I tell you this? See, when the Lord moved me in emotion, I see a different life. And I can see it. Even me now. And I have to be honest, I see the body of Christ perfect. And God, we need to be programmed with God's program. And most of us has allowed us to be programmed with our own program. And can I tell you yes, even when you see it, we still don't want to be because you're looking at everything to do in the natural. Instead of looking, what does God say? Listen. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem. Yes, yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace. See that verse there. My second grandchild has been born, and I knew there was something evil. My wife is up. The husband and daughter was up to us. My men and Hannah. I remember as well. Lord, there's something evil about you. And I says, Lord, I put that verse in my mind. Lord, may I tell you thing. You promised, I fear you. And you promised the one that fears the Lord to see the grandchildren. Well, Lord, I'm going up here. I'm going to see my grandchildren above them. I'm going to see them. And the reality, I'm going to see them and I'm going to live. And I take authority over all this that's going on here. And I bind it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I prayed that, all of a sudden my wife found me. He says, you better pray. For the way I don't have from born there. And it's not looking too good. And I see how I said, I have prayed. So I was up that night, that was at four o'clock. I was up to the hospital that night, and you've heard me saying this. What did I say? I will see my grandchildren, because I knew that promise belonged to me, because I feared God. And I will not, no, you will not touch him, sir. You will not touch this guy. What did I speak of? Life. And I was up into the hospital, and I was in my daughter sitting in the bed. Get you down to that thing and get that being prayed for. I never even got in the door. I got marched. So I went down the sun and they're sitting in the empty bear. And all of a sudden there's a wee boy, boy in the empty bear. And I just put my hand on the empty bear. And I says, Lord, I command his lungs to be whole and perfect and healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the stuff just bubbled out, out through his mouth was in his lungs. And all of a sudden, Brian says, nurse, nurse, nurse. And brought him over. Next thing, she says, what happened? What's happened? Well, that's the stuff that's all in his lungs coming out. She says, that's, that's real, what she says. So I was up. Next thing, before I left that night, the way was sitting beside my bed, 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 my door. And that's the marching line I ordered. I thought, get you down to this and get you down get that way in bed. And all I'm just saying to you is, was that blessing for me? Well, I have her mind set. I don't know what you think, but here's the key. We I tell you, it's a very dark one. I says, Satan, the Lord has promised me, if I walk and fear him, that my grandchildren, thou shalt see thy grandchildren. And we I tell you, can you imagine just the phone rung? And my wife said, you better pray. And I'm just telling you, yes, this is the reality. That's what God wants you to be programmed with. Most of us are not there. Most of us allow other people to tell things. Can I tell you this? Oh, go you to where not Exodus 34 verse 7. Exodus 
You must hear this. See, now that got really banging on my paint. I was just sending them that thoughts and everything. Exodus 34, verse 7. This is the road to you, uh, God speaking to Moses. Keep in mercy for thousands, forgiven neck and transgression, sin, and that will by no means clear the, uh, clear the guilty. Present present iniquity upon the fathers, upon the third and fourth generation, under the right See that? That's what it says there. The generation, they call it the generational curse. Well, it doesn't say curse the iniquity. It doesn't say curse. It does not say generational curse. For I read you a verse one or two ago, and it says, God is not cursing, you, bless you. It's the sin of the fathers. It's not a, it's not a curse. Right? Well, you this. Before you now to Exodus 18. Now, no matter what you say or I say, unless we pull people's strongholds down to their mind, they will never see this truth. So, is he going to be Is he going to be Ah, but there's something going on, or vice versa. Listen, there's strongholds there. Somebody has to come and pull them down. To open up people's minds to reality at the right time. Ezekiel 18, verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Who is this talking to, these verses? Children of Israel. Children of Israel. So it's a, it's a, it's a sins of the fathers for the children of Israel. You get that now? Right. Saying, the father is eating sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. We do you hear this? As I live, said the Lord, ye shall not have not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. You will not need to use this again in Israel. Could I say it again? You shall not need to use this again. It ceased there. Do you hear what I said there? When did it cease? Why can we not see this? Why can other people, because of a stronghold, people have taught them there's iniquities of fathers on you. And that has become a stronghold. And no matter what comes along, they can't see it. And they, when, see tonight, they would have switched off and they were doing this. And that's totally wrong. Because that's what the stronghold does. You can't listen, be also this, refuse to this, and you think, well, a person's preaching out. Now, that's what these, that's their own teaching, their own program, if you and I have got. That's what it does. And then you go and you program and tell everybody else. But listen, can I read this again? As I live, said them, verse 3, you think, Ye shall not have any occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. It was for Israel. It was, who was it for? Israel. Israel. Right. Go to verse 19. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. That has ceased. When did it say? Ezekiel 18. The authority of Christ, my goodness, majority of belief, Gen not generation, I get far stuff. Don't say that. Mm -hmm. Now listen, they believe it there. Now let me tell you, I don't believe it's there. When God says, he has blessed me with all spiritual blessings. He has blessed me with all spiritual blessings. And I went through the New Testament. And everybody says, you're cursed, you're cursed, you're cursed. And I says, well, I went through all the New Covenant, New Testament. And I looked to see if I was cursed. And I could not see, as a young believer, cursed. And I went to, uh, oh, you see if I find it. I don't know what I told you there. Numbers 23.
percent. See, I don't, I don't think we understand. We're allowing people to program us, and here's what I'm saying tonight: Don't you let anyone program you. You get in before the Lord, and you ask the Lord to show you from Scripture. Mm -hmm. And listen, a thing came to me the day I was in Balamoni. Go turn by these thoughts. Next thing, the day in Balamoni. The next thing, all of a sudden, this it came to me: Don't bake it. Don't bake it. In other words, don't put anything in the oven and bake it to make sure it's right. That's what the Lord said. Don't bake it. Make it, but don't bake it. And all I'm just saying is, the magic, listen to this. What he says, number, how shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? You curse yourself. By saying, this is honest, this was happened, this was happened in the family, this is passed down, place of first. Please. Now, I, I had a look at this myself. And if people around me believe, I said, I don't believe in this. And that's I walked in. And I tried to let the Lord program with him and me what he wanted me. And all I could say to you is, I'm going to try and follow the Lord. Now, as we first have told her, I'm going to finish here. Sorry for the so long. Numbers 23. Right. Now, listen. Go home and try and hope this should. Numbers 23. Right. Verse 19. Number 24. Right. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man should repent. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Tell me this. If you fear the Lord, what's coming on you? What's going on in your wife? What's going on in your children? You're going to see your grandchildren. You're going to this every blessing. And the, if you get the secret place and you finally let the Lord, all these things will happen. God's blessings will work. I but this is how. And you want to see what they're doing. And here's this common love. Mm -hmm. Find it. Pull it down. Here's what's going to happen. Surely goodness and mercy is going to fall on you. Some of it. No, no, no. No, this is how. And that's how. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. As I have 40, 54 verse 17. You don't know, read it. For this or not. Go to it. Fine. Thank you. Right. As I have 54. See, that's what you need to do. When you're squeezed, that's what you need to do. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against thee in judgment of death, for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. There's no weapon formed against you can prosper. If you're God's servant, and you're obeying the following him, read it there. Hi, but, well, your, your butts would probably think so, that's going some fake. No, no, it's not 17. Oh, sorry, yeah, 17. But no weapon formed against thee. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. I but what's going to, when you're squeezed, what's coming out? Listen. Wait, I show you. I want you to finish. But listen to us here. Go to Numbers 23. I'm going to get here yet. Numbers 23. I've said some things tonight, and please, I hope I have not offended you. I don't mean to. I don't want to. But tell you, I don't want you stuck in the road program, because you, you'll never walk in victory. And you will never overcome. And you're meant to be there. Everyone's meant to overcome. In Z, uh, Numbers 23, verse 19, but we'll go on down a bit. Right, okay, you know, 14, 8, 19. Right, right. Verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he have blessed, I can't reverse it. Can you reverse the blessing on yourself? <laughs> I'm blessed. And the only one who can reverse that blessing is me. And I am going there. Because God says, I'm blessed. And I'm going to believe what God says. God's not a man that should lie. 
I bless you with every spirit of blessing. Ephesians 1 verse 6. Every spirit of blessing has it. Right, what's this? Go to verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is any divination against Israel. There is no enchantment against us, Jacob. What's enchantment? I never looked at all. I hate to have fun. There's no... There's no condemnation. No pain. No enchantment. Why does that headache go through all that process to get the verses? No, no, it's... Surely there is no enchantment, neither any divin divination in Israel. Incantation. What are you doing, yes? These people were some night left and some. And what God said. We'd not know say the same. See, if we were there. We would say there's that. Wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? Mm. What would we be looking at? We'd be looking at having a pin. Now, what's this? Jesus comes along. And go to your room and read this yourself. You see, John, set 15 around. John 15. Verse. question there. Right, 22. John 15, verse 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. There was sin right left and sin. Mm -hmm. huh? and, and, and what does that mean? If I had not come, they wouldn't have had sin. But God is covered for sin. He did that. But now they have no cloak for their sin. God had covered. I see no I see nothing wrong with you. Even though their son might left and son, what does God say? Well she's a blessed people. When Jesus came along. That and covered for sin. So there's a covering on the son of it because they were blessed. So you work out it yourself, I'm not going to lie. But I'm not God says you are blessed. Don't let anyone program you until you get there. But if you do, but I tell you yes, you will open up doors that you will never enjoy. That's it for Lord. Be your I learned. I am blessed. I am special. And I am loved. For God says so. And I might not look as if my family is. But my family is blessed. My family is special. And my family is good. And God's going to do a work in my family. Providing I keep seeing what God says. And Lord would you give me spiritual eyesight to see what you say. And let, help me to reprogram my mind to your mindset, Father. Father, we just come to you. We call down every stronghold again that's coming against the body of Christ. And Father, we pray tonight. We pray, Lord, for the revelation of who we are. And Father, there's a verse coming out of my mind. But could I ask you a question? Go you to Psalm 105. I want to go, but I'm not trying to go. I want to, I want to just go home. If no, I don't mean to go. I want to stay. Me over speaking here. Tell me how I'm fine. I read, like to read this at the NIV. Tell me how I'm fine. There's maybe some people who read the NIV. Someone, there is there. Right, are they? Right, someone. We here are going to say, God sends a man, or a woman, 
God sends them on to do a job. And Joseph is a man to do a job. Yeah. Psalm 105. Now, the AV will say differently. And if you're an AV man, they probably have been that mindset for probably anything else. We say Psalm 105. And I was there. Psalm 105. Right. And he sent the man before them. Joseph sold as a slave. They bruised his feet and checked. His neck was put in irons. Till what he foretold came to pass. What happened? To what he foretold. Right? Till the word of the Lord he spoke proved him. True. Verse 7. What, what? Verse 7. It's the first Sunday. Yeah. Uh, uh, I know you're reading that. I know your mindset stuff. I don't know if it turns NAV. No, but it's not tomorrow. Could I No. Till what he had told. No. There, you, you, you're there, Ross. <coughs> Listen, that's here. Till what he foretold. What is foretold? Prophesy. Spoke forth. Proved that he was true before God. That's that again. Okay. Till what he foretold came to pass, till the word of the Lord proved him true. Could I tell you yes? If you're speaking the truth and God has told you to do it, could I tell you yes, God will prove you, sir? That what he's speaking is true. And that's what I'm joking. Read this. Then the king, king sent, and what he spoke forth came through. Then the king sent, no, let me have those to read you. You see? She says, read verse, not funny. And I'm supposed to be playing here. Isaiah 55 and 11, he says, My word shall not return unto me void. But it'll accomplish what I've said. Mm -hmm. And the word of his servant will not return unto him. But it will accomplish. It's not powerful good in any way. Let's go finish. Father, we just pray. Pray for everyone and everyone's mind, Father. That from now on we would be just program the Holy Spirit program us with the mindset of the new creation of who we are. Father, we pull down on the strongholds that we have received. And we pull them strongholds over our thoughts, over our family and every father. And we pray the blessing of the Lord on our families, on our wives, on our children, in our homes, and even our animals, Father. And Father, we thank that we are a blessed people. And our families are a blessed people. And Father, we pray the strongholds of other things that have clouded this out from minds. And we, Father, tonight, Father, we pray that the reprogramming start from tonight, of who we really are. We pray for our grandchildren, Father. We will see them, and we, they will be blessed. And we thank you, Father, for them, and for all this now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.